Thank you. I'm the only candidate who can make this promise, and this is one of the biggest promises because our country's never been in a situation like this. We have a man that has no clue negotiating with nuclear weapons. I will prevent World War III. I will prevent it. On my first day back in the White House, I will terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration, stop the invasion on our southern border, and begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. Does anybody want to hear the snake? Do you know what the snake is? Do you want it? Does anybody know what the snake is? It's something, it was a song written many years ago and changed it around a little bit. Should I say it or not? I don't know. Madam Attorney General, should I do the snake? Okay, the Attorney General wants it, I'm doing it. She's great. So this is really a metaphor, this is a situation that's happening on our border and elsewhere, where we're allowing people to come into our country that are very dangerous. And it's really, I think, perfect. And unfortunately, it's true, because we're waiting for disasters, the likes of which we probably have never seen before. China, just recently, we found out 27,000 people come in, all young men, no wives, family, and children, all young men. What are they, building an army in our country? Other countries from other countries from South America, but countries from all over the Middle East are pouring into our country. A lot of bad things are going to happen. A lot of bad things. This is not, this is not good stuff. It's, uh, it's a disaster waiting to happen. So remember that when you're hearing these words. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, poor thing, poor thing, she cried. I'll take you in and I'll take care of you. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, cried the vicious snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night, and soon as she arrived, she found the pretty snake she'd taken in had been revived. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, cried the vicious snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you truly would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman. And you've bitten me, but why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Now that is exactly what's happening to our country. Okay, exactly. Right? Exactly. Right? It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. We're gonna do a big deportation. We're gonna get those bad ones out. Remember, mental institutions, prisons, and terrorists are pouring into our country. We're right now the largest caravan. That was my term, I think. I have a lot of terms, a lot of good terms. But caravan was uh, my term. The largest caravan anyone's ever seen is right now coming up through Mexico. Thousands and thousands of people are going to pour right into a country. We have no idea who they are. Bad things are going to happen, very bad. 
I will immediately restore and expand the Trump travel ban on entry from terror play countries, and I will implement strong ideological screening on all immigrants. That's we have no choice. If you hate America, if you want to abolish Israel, if you sympathize with jihadists, then we don't want you in our country, and you're not going to come into our country. We will restore law and order to our communities, and we will respect our police again. And I will direct a completely overhaul DOJ to investigate every Marxist prosecutor in America for their illegal, racist, and reverse enforcement of the law. We will take over our horribly run Washington, D.C. It is horribly run. Have you seen it? It's filthy, dirty, with graffiti all over the most beautiful marble columns, magnificent columns built 200 years ago, 100 years ago. It's, they're loaded with graffiti at levels you've never seen. The roads are disgusting. They're like driving over garbage. And we're going to clean it up, renovate it, and rebuild our capital so that it's no longer a nightmare of murder and crime. Last week, three people were killed. Every week, people are killed. Every night, people are hurt badly. They go to Washington. They're proud of their country. They come out. They're frightened to go outside. They can't go outside. You can't. If you go outside, you're making a big mistake. This is our capital. It's never been like that. You know, when I left, it was uh, different. It was much different. But years ago, it was really amazing. Now what they're doing, you know, I, I wouldn't allow anybody to park on our, put their tent up on our lawns, our beautiful parks. Now the parks are loaded up with tents and they're loaded up with homeless. We have to help the homeless, but we can't destroy our capital. We're going to rebuild our capital. We're going to make it so beautiful. It's going to be the most beautiful capital in the world. And unlike Ron DeSanctis, I will protect Social Security and Medicare for our great seniors. They deserve it. Why are we doing this? There's so many ways we can make money. A drill, a drill, drill, drill. Much more money than we're talking about. We drill. We've got more, more liquid gold than anybody in the world. We're also going to fight to give much better health care than what you have right now. This is a newer subject, but Obamacare is a disaster. And I said, we're going we're gonna to do something about it. I saved Obamacare when we got John McCain's negative vote. You know, he voted against it after campaigning for many, many years. He said, uh, thumbs down. It was an amazing night. But we're going to fix it because uh, it's a catastrophe for family budgets. Even Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren, have you ever heard of her? Now she's uh, Pocahontas because of her great Indian heritage. She even said that it needs to be fixed. Pocahontas said it has to be fixed, so we're going to fix it. We're in open enrollment. You know, we have an open enrollment season right now on Obamacare. And everybody's seeing how staggeringly and brutally expensive their plans have become, right? They're like crazy what's going on with the plans, the way they're up. They're not, they're not affordable. Under this complete and total Democrat-created disaster, a family of four is paying over $1,500 a month for health care plans with a $10,000 deductible. $10,000? You know, you're going to be hit by a truck. That's a big deal. $10,000 deductible. So you get nothing, basically. You're paying into something, you get nothing. A 60-year-old couple is paying $2,000 a month with that big deductible. We're going to make it much less expensive for people. We're going to make it much better care. And we're going to give far more options to American patients. And we're not looking to save. We're looking to help people. You know, they said, oh, I'm going to attack Obamacare. I'm not attacking it. When we had Obamacare, I fixed it and made it work. But I also made the statement, it will never be any good. It will never be any good. And it is no good. We're going to give you great health care. That's what we're going to give you. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content on our children. 
And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a max — a mask mandate. And this is one I can't even believe I have to say. I will keep men out of women's sports. Do you believe it? Yeah. I will fully uphold the Second Amendment that I have done that. I will protect innocent life. We will restore free speech. We do not have free speech. And I will secure our elections. Our goal will be, and as I said before, one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. It's very simple. And by the way, do you know how much money you save on the machines? You'll be spending one-tenth or less to get better elections, safer elections. But until then, Republicans must win so I can get that job done. If you want to save America from crooked Joe Biden, then get every patriot you know, make sure they're registered Republicans, and get them out to vote. Their local precinct caucus at 7 p.m. So it's 7 p.m. on Monday, January 15th, Martin Luther King Day, and get out there and do a job. Do a job. You know, if we can get the big numbers, there's nothing they can do. They cheat, and they're always going to cheat. We're going to try and keep it down to a minimum. They cheat like hell. That's all they know how to do. That's the only thing they do well. Their policies are, who the hell wants open borders, high taxes, high interest rates, can't buy a home, bad education. There's not a thing they do that's, how can you win elections like that? You know how? By cheating. That's what they have to do. And they cheat and they don't care. And they don't care how many times you vote. Vote as many times as you can. Where Republicans say, sir, I'm an American citizen. I can only vote once. You know, that's the way it is. And there's something nice about that. But what they do in elections uh, should, should never, ever have happened. We are asking you to commit to caucus for us and bring as many people as you can to caucus for the campaign. Sign up at ia.donaldjtrump.com. So in conclusion, together we're taking on some of the most menacing forces and vicious opponents our people have ever seen. No matter how hateful and corrupt the communists and criminals we're fighting against may be, you must never forget that our nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you, Front Row Joes. This is your home. This is your heritage. And our American liberty is your God-given right. And we love that you're here. You know, we're going to go out after this is over. You have plenty of time, and we're going to see a, a game against a place called Michigan. You're going to be watching that? So good luck. That'll be good. But in the meantime, as important as that is, this is more important because we're going to save our country. We're going to save our country. This is, this is our last chance. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans and blazed the trails, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, dug out the great Panama Canal, raised up the skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and launched our brave American astronauts to plant the stars and stripes on the face of the moon. What we've done is so incredible. And now we have a horrible situation going on, an embarrassment. Our country's become an embarrassment. Together, they made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world. History of the world. Think of that. Think of that. But now, we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has the highest 
inflation. In 50 years, where banks are collapsing and interest rates are skyrocketing. Likewise, we are a nation where energy costs have reached the highest in history. We are no longer energy independent or energy dominant as we were just three short years ago. We are a nation that is begging Venezuela and many others for oil. Please, 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 Joe Biden says, please help us, please, please. And yet we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country anywhere in the world. We are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will be reducing their output of oil and substantially increasing the price and met that threat by announcing that we will no longer be drilling for oil in large areas of Alaska and other parts of our country. We are a nation that is consumed by the radical left's Green New Deal, yet everyone knows that the Green New Deal is fake and will lead to our destruction. We are a nation whose leaders are demanding all electric cars, despite the fact that they can't go far, cost too much, and whose batteries are produced in China with materials only available in China, when an unlimited amount of gasoline is available inexpensively in the United States, but it is not available in China. And now we are a nation that wants to make our revered army tanks. They are revered. They're the best in the world. They want to make them all electric so that despite the fact that they are also not able to go far, fewer pollutants will be released into the air as we blast our way through the enemy territory. And they also want to make our jet fighters with a green energy stamp, losing 15% efficiency but allowing us to keep our enemy's atmosphere clean of pollutants while we viciously and unceremoniously attack them at levels no one's ever seen before. We are a nation that ended oil exploration and production in the United States. Just as the price of oil reached an all-time high, what other country would do such a foolish and self-destructive thing? We are a nation that surrendered in Afghanistan, leaving behind dead soldiers, American citizens, and $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment in the world, and also leaving behind Bagram, one of the biggest military bases in the world, and only one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons. Why, oh why, oh why? And we are a nation that allowed Russia to devastate Ukraine, killing hundreds of thousands of people. And it will only get worse. It would never have happened with me as your president. And for four straight years, it didn't happen. Likewise, the recent attack on Israel would never have happened. They wouldn't even have thought of doing what they did. Iran was broke under the Trump administration. They didn't have the money to fund Hamas and Hezbollah. They didn't have the money to fund themselves. They were going to make a deal, and it was going to be a great deal for us. And it was going to keep the world safe. But those sanctions were lifted, and now Iran is a rich country with $200 billion and another $6 billion for hostages and $10 billion for electricity from Iraq all compliments of the Biden administration. And China, with Taiwan, is next. We are a nation that allows the radical left to violently attack our cities, leaving behind massive destruction and death, and nothing happens to them. There is no punishment. But when people who love our country protest in Washington, they become hostages unfairly imprisoned for long portions of their life. We are a nation that has weaponized its law enforcement against the opposing political party like never before seen. We've got a Federal Bureau of Investigation that won't allow bad election-changing facts to be presented to the public and which offers $1 million to a writer of fiction about Donald Trump to lie and say it was fact 
where Hunter Biden's laptop from hell was Russian disinformation, and the FBI knew it wasn't, but 51 intelligence agents said it was, and a Department of Justice that refuses to investigate egregious acts of voting irregularities and fraud. And we have a man who is totally corrupt and the worst president in the history of our country who is cognitively impaired and in no condition to lead and is now in charge of dealing with Russia and possible nuclear war, which would be World War III and far more devastating than any of the previous wars because of the weaponry that no one even wants to think or talk about. We are a nation that no longer has a free and fair press. Fake news is all you get. And they are indeed the enemy of the people. They refuse to discuss the Biden crime family, but enjoy covering false indictments of Donald Trump, who has done nothing wrong. We are a nation where free speech is no longer allowed and where crime is rampant and out of control like never before. We are a nation that is allowing Iran to build a massive nuclear weapon and China to use the trillions of dollars it has taken from us to build a military to rival its own. What a sad state of affairs. And less than three years ago, just think of it, we had Iran, China, Russia, and North Korea in check. They weren't going to do a thing against us, and everyone knows it. They respected us like they'd never respected anybody before. Now Russia and China are holding summits to carve up the world. And perhaps most importantly, we are a nation that is no longer respected or listened to on the world stage. We are a nation that in many ways has become a complete and total joke. And we are a nation that is hostile to liberty, freedom, and faith. We are a nation whose economy is collapsing into a cesspool of ruin, whose supply chain is broken, whose stores are not stocked, whose deliveries are not coming, and whose educational system is ranked at the bottom of every single list. We are a nation where large packs of sadistic criminals and thieves are allowed to go into stores and openly rob them beat up and kill their workers and customers, and leave with armloads of goods, but no retribution, where the authority of our great police has been taken from us, and taken from our country, where their families and pensions have been threatened, and their lives would be destroyed for the mere mention of the words law enforcement. We are a nation where fentanyl and all other forms of illegal drugs are easier to get than formula for our beautiful little babies, and a nation whose once revered airports are dirty, crowded mess. Yet you sit and wait for hours, and then are notified that the planes won't leave. They just won't leave. And they have no idea when they will. They have no idea. Where ticket prices have tripled, they don't have the pilots to fly the planes, they don't have qualified air traffic controllers, and they just don't know what they're doing. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, willpower, and strength. We are a nation that has lost its way, but we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it is hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists. We will throw off the sick political caste. And we will rout the fake news media. We will drain the swamp. 
and we will liberate our country from these tyrants and villains once and for all and like never before. Like those patriots before us, we will not bend, we will not break, we will not yield, we will never give in, we will never give up, and we will never, ever back down. With your support, we will go on to victory, the likes of which no one has ever seen before. We will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House, and we will take back our country on Election Day 2024. The great silent majority is rising like never before, and under our leadership, the forgotten men and women will be forgotten no longer. We are one movement, one people, one family and one glorious nation under God. Yes. And together we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again, and we will make America great again. Thank you very much, Iowa. God bless you. God bless you, Iowa. Thank you. God bless you all.